Right, the long-awaited crafter finished video. When I say finished, there's a couple more little things to do, but we'll explain that at the very, very end. But it's 99.9% .9 there. Audio and a few other bits we're going to talk about. We'll do them in another episode. But for now, it's finished. Look at the size of it. I'm having to stand really far back to get it all in the camera. And if it wasn't long enough before, I've added a little Thule storage box on the back. I'm going to show you around, but what I'm going to do, first of all, we're just going to go move it into the woodlands, out of the bright light in the shade, set it all up, show you it all working, and take you for a walk around. take you for a tour and we'll just run around the outside and talk a little bit about the spec of the van before we head inside. So the first thing you can see that's most obvious is obviously there's the awning rail that's been attached to the outside there so that's full electric you may have seen it coming out earlier on simply press the button and out it pops there so this is the two lay one I've also had LED lighting strip underneath that. You'll see on the roof there we've got a tent box. The purpose of this crafter was to be six berth and I'll explain why and what we've done inside to make it that. But on the outside there you can see you've got the tent box cargo with the solar panels put on the roof there. That gives you another place for somebody to sleep if needs be or just to chill in the evening if the kids are asleep inside. The beauty as well of having the solar panels on the roof is you can angle that to face the sun. So solar is so much more effective if it's pointing at the sun as opposed to just on the flat roof. There are some on the flat roof but with us being able to angle that, even if we don't need the tent box on a campsite, you face the van towards the sun, pop that up, you're gonna get a lot more energy from the solar there. So basically the van is, if you've not seen the previous videos, it was 177 brake auto, extra long wheelbase, all that extra length is at the end there with a bunch of extras, it's auto, heated seats, front fog lights, additional sensors, a few of the bits, factory fitted tow bar, basically factory ordered spec to what I wanted to do in chrome yellow. Chrome yellow because it was going back when I ordered this, before COVID, it was kind of our standard company colour. We had it in a couple of vehicles. Our flatbed was chrome yellow. I had a TSI that was chrome yellow. And I just really liked the colour. When it arrived, I was a little bit unsure because I was thinking, a giant DHL van. But now it's all finished with the black detail. I think it looks really smart. So camper glass windows, as you'll see there, with sliding windows on both sides. We've added the arch mouldings that are a really popular addition just to break it up and make it a little bit more beefy. Navis Mac 80, 17 inch wheels for that off-roady kind of look with a BF Goodrich tire. So these wheels are 150 kilos load rated, so absolutely fine for a crafter even of this weight. So one thing that's definitely going to come up is, is it under the weight? These things can only be 3.2, 3.5 ton. Well, no, it's definitely not. We're going to have to uprate it because we had great ideas of trying to keep it underweight, but to get what we wanted in there, it just wasn't going to be possible. So two windows on the side there. These windows are real windows, so cut out. So you've got a sliding window here and then another big fixed window just when you're in the cooking area it gives you a nice big visual and then the universal rear quarter windows there with a small slider just to allow some ventilation in the back there so moving around the front you've got the camera system which i'll explain in a bit more detail but these are absolutely incredible it's something i didn't think i needed until i had it and now i couldn't be without it and i'll, I'll explain later so around the front here i like the commercial look i like the commercial bumpers so we've decided to stick with that i know a lot of people get them color coded but i think it just looks more rugged it suits the look and i just think it contrasts the yellow really well transporter hq led headlights with the sequential indicators these are twin leds so at night time driving you've got a lot better visual on the road at the top here you see you've got the roof rack which was built for us by williams so the goal was again make it really light just uh, and have it built so it could carry what we needed and and leave space so instead of just having a generic one put on they very cleverly built it for us to work around what we needed with the max fans with the solar with the ability to mount the tent box and it's perfect really really impressed with that it's really good job really good finish and it's really light for what it is transport hq sunstrip absolute must on all our vehicles firstly because they look cool but secondly because it's bright sunlight they're, they're, these screens are so big and so deep that that protects the sun from blaring down on you when you're in the French sunshine or wherever you choose to go. Around the front, here's a few things you'll see. We went with factory front parking sensors and fog lights. You've got the additional camera here for the camera system with a little 3D printed bracket, which again is part of the in integrated camera system, which I'll show you later on. Black badge, vinyl strip along the front here just to hide that chrome because it just, with the black headlights, I wanted to black out the whole front. And then e-grill built in for the electric hookup point. So when you're on a campsite, connect that there and then that's going to charge all the batteries in the back which we'll show you later and then just went with a matte black badge just again to break up that and lose the chrome moving around this side pretty much the same as the other side other than you'll see there's the ladder that williams built for us when they built the roof rack perfect lining so you can get straight up there to the tent box and then the additional bag here which is just a shoe bag so you can put your shoes in it when you're up there in the tent box so a couple of reasons why we decided we wanted a tent box or some sort of pop-up tent on the roof 
Firstly, for that extra sleeping space, so you could really sleep two people up here. This is a double sized bed with a mattress all built in. But the other thing was just to have that extra space to chill in the evenings. You can open up these on the sides and just have it nice and vented and have some wind through and just have an extra kind of living chilling space if the kids were asleep downstairs and we wanted to be able to just have a bit of time to ourselves, have a few beers, glass of wine, watch the sunset. You can do it from here, open up the fronts and allow the, the vents to open it so you can open up so you can uh, see right the way through. The dilemma we had when we were putting this up here was though was how do we get power up? So we'd kind of originally discussed the idea of having an external USB port that came up into the tent that we could charge phones and, and other devices from and possibly a little portable fan and then we discovered these things here. So this is the EcoFlow River. You may have seen these in some of our other videos. We've used the bigger power pack in some transporter builds, but this is just a really nice small, smaller version, a portable one that can tuck nice and neatly in the corner of the tent box here. That gives you everything you need to have that extra power, whether you want to power a portable fan, charge your iPhone, the beauty of these is well they have a little light on them so you can just pop the light on to light this up at night if you've not got any additional torches or any lighting up here you've just got that extra little power coming from that there and this display is telling you all the time how much power you've got left how much you've used how much is available and then the, there's so many ports on the front here so you've got usb-c standard usb fast charge usb and then cigarette light uh, style port on the side there these can be charged off solar they can be charged off your mains on the inside just really versatile bit of kit Plug your phone in, the USB-C port, and you've got portable power you can use on the go. Especially when you're away camping, this thing can be so much more practical. You might want to take it to the beach for a bit of power. You might want to take it down and have it in the awning at night. But just that usability and the port portability of those just makes it a great addition to this setup. So moving around the back here, we thought, well, if we've made it big, we may as well make it even bigger. As much as this thing is massive, when you've got all your kit in there and the children and people in there, there isn't really a lot of room for extra storage for things like Kadaks, you know, your barbecues, your camping chairs, electric scooters and stuff. So we wanted to add that extra bit of room to have almost like a garage space because there's no garage space inside. Two lay carrying rack with the extra storage on the back there just seemed perfect for the job. So it already had a factory fitted tow bar fitted. So it means we could just mount this rack on the back get this box and it just gives you tons of storage so in the back there you'll see you may have seen this scooter in the last video we did great bit of kit to take on the campsite so you can get up and down from the shops and just get around plenty of storage in there so we've got the blocks that go into the wheels to rise it up four or five camping chairs rug kadak and everything can all sit in there nice and neatly and then just be locked away nice and safely and it's tucked away at the back there and the beauty with this one having the factory fitted cameras as well as the full camera system is your view from the back here is great so you can literally back this thing up within a few inches using the cameras so you aren't really aware of that extra storage on the back there it just doesn't make it feel any bigger the other thing around the back here you'll see is the camper glass windows so they're just the standard dark tint windows so you can see right the way out the back there yes yeah, so that's pretty much the outside finished so let's head inside so moving inside the goal was always to be able to transport six people and sleep six people so the setup here we decided to go with was the rymo vario tech bed being able to move this backwards and forwards there's a couple of benefits one when you're traveling the children can be further back to give them that extra space and clip a table in there but also it means that when you're using it as a camper you can slide the seat right the way forward so you've got plenty of access to get through the back there and being on that rail, it just gives you the adjustability you need to to be able to fold this out because this becomes the double bed. So I'll run you through what's in the back and then I'll show you how the front setup works with the swivel seats. So this was all done for us by Rails Conversions or Rails Conversions, who unfortunately doesn't do it anymore. He stopped doing it. This is one of the last builds he's did, he did. When I originally decided to do this project, we were going to do it ourselves and we just ran out of time and space. So I put a plea out on social media and Richard Hales contacted me and said, we'll do it for you. We've got a cancellation. So grateful for him to be able to take this on and do it for us. And he's done so many crafters. When I gave him the brief and what I wanted, he was able to put this together exactly how I was looking for. In fact, better than I was looking for. So inside, we wanted to try and break up the yellow, but still add a bit of accents of it. So under the cupboards here, you'll see there's chrome yellow, very similar chrome yellow color. We've added that in the tables and a few other spaces as well, but we wanted to face it with a blue because I think blue complemented the yellow really well, but I really like the exposed birch ply edges. So where possible, Richard used birch ply to get that extra finished ply edge. And where he didn't need to have the ply edge, he's used a lightweight furniture ply just to save weight where we could. Everything's finished to such a high level uh, and above and beyond really what I expected, but I'll run you through what we've got storage everywhere because so we needed to pack as many children as many as much stuff in here as possible whether it's ipads clothes shoes you name it 
these guys have thought of storage. So you've got everything from storage down here, along the back side of the sliding bed there with loads of cupboards in it. Storage cupboards up the top here. So you've got the 5G motorhome Wi-Fi system here that runs off a SIM card, allowing you to stream Netflix and other things, Disney on, off the TV just here. You've got the Truman net box for all the intelligent system for the electrics and the heating and so on. And then you've got the camera system for the full 360 camera system. So the cameras we showed you earlier, I'll show you them function in a minute. They can be viewed on this TV for the security element of it and also on the display screen where your rear view mirror would be. That's constantly recording. So it's recording what's going on all the time that's around the vehicle, whether you're driving or whether you're still. So effectively you can sit here if you're concerned something's going on, pop the TV on and you can watch what's going on constantly. But the beauty of this system is it gives you such a good visual when you're driving. I'll show you that in a bit more detail as we move into the cab. So moving into the back here, again, storage anywhere we possibly could, utilize it as much as possible. We are very much, when you're on a campsite, you don't really want to be cooking inside because it makes the vehicle smell. So we decided not to go for an oven or anything and we just went for a simple twin induction hob just to be able to heat up water or cook pasta. We'll do the majority of cooking outside on a Kodak. That was always the aim really so we could utilize as much space as we possibly could here. You've got your full control system here, gives you everything, all the information you need to know about your solar and your inverter and what's going on, if you're connected to the, connected to the mains, how much power you're getting from your solar, your controller for your awning, water pump, your tank heater if you were, for any reason you were camping in the Alps or something and it was the winter, doing a bit of snowboarding trip, you can water, heat the water outside if needs be, and then controllers for all the light switches here, which are all mood lighting on dimmers. So moving further into it, again, just loads of storage cupboards up here. Nice big fridge here. And then the other thing that we wanted was a good size sink instead of your little standard kind of camping style fridges. So in here covered up nicely is a nice copper full size sink so you can get a decent amount of washing up in there. Just covered up nicely with that while you're driving along. And then a nice sleek black mixer tap there. So this is birch and this has been oiled so it matches everything else and it's protected with a, an Osmo oil. That's carried through all the way to the rear, so you've got a nice amount of shelving and just additional space to put things. A couple of storage nets which we've added so the children can put their phones and stuff in there while they're traveling. More plug sockets here, so you've got 240 plug sockets here. More plug sockets on the back here with 12 volt charging points and additional light in here in the rear for the children's section so they can have the lights on or off independently from the ones at the front. So with needing to sleep three more people back here, we decided to go for this staggered bunk bed setup. So what you've got here is a small bunk here at the top with a cargo net to stop little children falling out. Additional storage nets and LED lights and charging points at the back there. And then you have another bunk here, which is a full six foot bed, and then another bunk along the bottom there, all with this matching fabric throughout the whole lot. You've got more storage cupboards at the top here. Again, just for the children to store their stuff in or whoever's stuff at the back here and more LED lighting points. The other thing we wanted to do instead of this for just to be a permanent bed space, we wanted to be able to use it as a sofa space. So these cushions pop out and this folds up and then this becomes your sofa seating area. So sit back here, nice padded back there. So this section here becomes a sofa and same again, you can sit there. So I'll go around the back shortly and open the back doors and show you what it's like from the other side. But the other thing obviously was integrated blinds to block out the sunlight so they can sleep well at night at the back here. They open up nicely. So just camper glass windows at the back here. So nice 80% tint so you can see out well, but looking from outside looking in, it's almost limo tint. It's dark and people can't see in. So with these little windows at the back here, so we wanted to be able to block these out at night. So we've just got these nice little magnetic clip on covers that cover their thermal blinds. Plenty more storage down here, big, deep, massive drawers at the bottom there. And ventilation ports throughout for the air conditioning system. So I'm not gonna open it up because it's quite complex under there, but under here you've got a full air conditioning system that runs independently, that pipes out throughout the vehicle, including in the bathroom, which I'll show you shortly, and also a full heating system. So in theory, this thing can be used any time of the year, anywhere. If it's freezing cold outside, it'll warm. If it's boiling hot outside, the air conditioning will kick in. Under here, we have, so under this side, you've got all the complicated electrics, solar system, and all this is Bluetoothable, so you can read it and find out what's going on with them constantly, and all the fuses if you need to access anything. So as much as 
when we're away at campsites we'll always try and use the facilities we did want to be able to have a toilet and shower if we needed to so we decided to go with standard shower here in a fairly small area but with the the tiny compostable toilet here so the idea being that if you absolutely need to you can use the toilet there it's compostable so the liquid waste goes into there the solid waste goes into the back you get a compostable bag and you throw it away but really nice neat little shower the shower works really well actually all working off the underslung water that's underneath the vehicle little touch lights and then also here little max fan pop-up dome fan just to allow you to ventilate when you're having a shower in there so to make this a nice big usable space we decided to go for this rail bed system as i said before that just means you can slide this chair right back if you're using it as more of a lounging area to give you space and if you're sitting here to eat i've got a night nice, uh, big clip-on table it locates on this rail here that locates on this rail the beauty of this as well is while we're traveling the children can have the table out they can be playing cards rock wireless mounts can be clipped on here so they can watch films and movies while we're on the go and just a good usable space really so next up i'll show you what it's like when you swivel the seat so you can use this as a big family seating area Swivel seats are really hard to find for a transporter. Well, there's one company that do them, a company called R&J Camper Solutions, and they're brilliant. The way they've designed this seat to swivel is genius because it has to lift to turn. So I'll swivel these seats now to show you. These guys don't have them on the website, and I think it's partly down to the fact that they just, or they didn't at the point I ordered these, and I think it's partly down to the fact they just can't produce them quick enough. So I gave them a call and told them I was after them, and they added me to a waiting list, and they came through. Spin these seats around now and show you how usable it is when you've got this as like a family seating area. I've not filmed the whole process of spinning these because it's a bit of an act to it, but once you know, you can do it in a few minutes. It's quite simple. There's four points along the bottom there, two on the front on the double, and then four on the inside of the uh, single. You undo those and then it's a bit of a negotiating and moving to swivel them around. The beauty and the clever thing about the double one is they've had to create a mechanism that allows the seat to lift, to turn, to get over all the fuses and stuff. So really well thought out, brilliant design by these guys. Um, get in touch if you have to swivel in your double, but it just makes it so much more usable space. So you can comfortably sit here. I've tried it out. We have had these built for storage, but also as a bit of a footrest. You comfortably sit here table out the front here if you're sitting eating your dinner or playing games or something with the children and sit and watch the tv there so we went with your standard 12 volt tv here so you can sit and watch watch a bit of tv if you need to it's got smart tv so it's got your um, netflix youtube amazon on there also gives the ability to flick over and watch the cameras and you can see what's going on outside while you're sitting here so additionally other than that again just more lighting and usb charging ports 240 volt plug socket there and your standard uh, usb ports there just you can never have too many charging points can you same again at the top here mat reading light more charging points and then extra storage above the top here of the cab because that's kind of a dead space best place for storing bedding and light things up there as well so the thing we decided to do was instead of having a built-in audio system in the back uh, is just go for like your standard sony Bluetooth speakers, we can take that outside and have it with it out there if you want to, or have it in there. And these things pack such a good punch and good bit of bass and audio. We decided that's a better option than having an integral built-in audio system. We are gonna do, in a coming episode, we're gonna do a full audio install in the front. And I just mean new speaker tweeter upgrades and a sub more for your audio while you're traveling along. But that'll feature in a new episode in the, in the coming weeks. We're also gonna replace the standard factory head unit with a Halo 11. I don't know anybody else's experience this, but I tend to find with a lot of the Volkswagen stereos and new ones, they have really bad static crackling when you're listening to them via uh, CarPlay. So, and the new Halo 11 also has wireless CarPlay, whereas these have to be plugged in. So we'll cover that in a future episode, but speaker tweeter, sub upgrade in the front section, and then nice new Halo 11 head unit coming in the next few weeks. So keeping with the whole, trying to keep it all looking nice and tidy, we went with this gray vinyl finish just so it's nice and wipe clean and easy. Lots of vents and ports for the air conditioning and heating throughout the vehicle so the whole vehicle can stay cold or warm. Uh, and then blinds fitted, blackout blinds so you can keep this section dark to match the blinds that are on the back. Right, and finally in this section, as much as we've had air conditioning in here, we still wanted to have one of the Max fans because they're a great bit of kit. So these things, we went for one with a cover there, but it allows you to push and pull the air. It's all electric, you can work it off a remote as well, but it just allows you to turn the fan on and you can pull in air in or blowing air out 
all one sitting here just to allow a bit of ventilation. So on the roof here, you'll see we went for this suede effect in the light gray to match the gray of the sides. I kind of wanted to keep that lighter feel to it so it wasn't too dark and carry on the OEM light gray plastics and the interior cab lining right the way through the vehicle. So that's why we went for this light kind of soft, cozy suede effect and then lighting throughout, which is all on a dimmer. So you've got the mood lighting on the top of the cupboards. You've also got the same mood lighting on the bottom of the cupboards that all works on one controller all dimmable and then the individual recessed leds again same all uh, on a dimmer if you just want to turn it down a little bit for a bit more mood lighting so the beauty of this rymotech bed is that it's triple seat as we needed with the isofix points in there for children's seats but this then folds out to become a double bed and there's your double bed so going back to the camera system that I know I keep raving about, but I just want that thing I didn't think I needed until I had it. And I'm just so crazy impressed with it. It's been so useful already on the sh few short journeys I've done. So this is a setup from a company called Trailer Vision. So the cameras are mounted on the front, on the two sides and one on the rear. And it gives you this full 360 view of the vehicle from above. So this is what you see while you're driving along as well as the rear view camera. So you can see what's going on there as if you had a standard rear view camera in your vehicle. That's coming from the camera that we've installed in the rear. You can then switch through that different mode from a control button that's here on the side, it allows you to pick or choose an angle. This is the angle that you see when you're reversing. You can see we've taken the box off the back there, but it gives you a really nice clear, clear view. So even with this box attached to the tow bar, I can see really clearly how far I can back up. And then that's your full 360 view over the top there which is pretty accurate but the beauty of this is while you're driving along it shows you all your blind spots so you can see what's going on uh, all around you if somebody pulls alongside you now it works very cleverly off your indicators as well so if you indicate one side if i indicate to the left there you'll see you can see the whole left side of the vehicle which is down this side you can see the awnings out if i indicate to the right you can see the whole right side of the vehicle so i can see if there's anything on my blind spot on this side as well as still being able to see what's going on there. And then the minute you pop the vehicle into reverse, you get the reverse angle. So this has a factory fitted camera anyway, so I get a display in the front here, but this one from Trailer Vision is even clearer. The clarity is spot on, and it gives you these guidelines to show you how far you can go to get back. So this system is constantly recording, as I said before, so it's acting as a full security camera system as well as the functionality of being able to use it while you're driving along to give you a good view all the way around the vehicle. So on the front for blackout at night, we decided to go for a fuel lagoon screen wrap. We've done these for transporters for a long while and they brand them as well for us. You can buy these on our website with this branding in lots of colors if you wanted to. But this is the one I found is the most blackout at night. It wraps really nice and neatly round. It's locks into the rear view mirrors and it comes in like a nice handy little carry bag when it's folded away. So it's not taking up loads of storage while you're using it, but keeps the inside of the cab there nice and dark. I am terrible for sleeping if there's daylight. I like it to be pitch black and that really blacks it out and also looks smart too. So finally moving around the back here, once you've got the storage box off, which is fairly easy to lift off, two man job, but fairly easy. In the back here, it all opens up. So if the children are in the bed, in the beds and they want a bit of fresh air to come through or just to allow some light through, we decided not to have a garage section and have this all able to be opened up. Same grey vinyl white clean surfaces with the blinds there for the blackout. Just allows you to let ventilation right the way through the vehicle and open it up if you wanted to. The other little addition, nice bit of transport HQ branding, bit of ventilation there for the heater. The other thing we wanted to have was an external shower point. So Richard built the shower point in the back here for us. So hot and cold running shower, pop that in there, turn it on. Shower the kids off before you allow them inside. So there we have it, a full tour of our extra long wheelbase crafter. So this has probably been the most asked for video we've had in a long time. We get asked all the time what's going on with it and I've just needed to piece together a few final bits till we can do it. That and the Tesla van, that we get asked about well, like 20 times a day at least. But that also has an update coming. It is rolling, nearly rolling. Not driving, but nearly rolling. So we'll fill you in on that in the coming weeks, I promise. Yeah, this is almost done. As I mentioned before, audio, we'll do an audio install, show you how you upgrade the speakers and the tweeters and possibly put a little sub in the front there. And then also there's a video coming. You may have seen us share a little um, clip on our Instagram of the sequential side repeaters. Yeah, I'll post a little video here of what they look like. When they're nearly available, we'll do a video to show you how to install them. 
just to finish this off, give that extra little bit of detail from the outside. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Some of the stuff you see here, we do sell on our website. You can get to that via transporthq.co.uk and there's a crafter section, the headlights and various other bits. And we're trying to grow our crafter catalogue more and more all the time because we can see how popular they are and we also love them ourselves. Suspension possibly coming soon. We've got a set that I'm going to put on a vehicle just to try it out, uh, lower in suspension, but don't hold me to that just yet until we've got a little bit further down the line with it but yeah buckets of other stuff coming for these because they've just become so usable and practical if you're like me and you've got loads of kids or you want to use it to go to shows like we will do with our staff and team then it's just a bit more usable than a transporter i guess but there you go please do like the video it means a lot to us you like it more of the people get to see it subscribe to the channel if you don't already more crafter videos coming as i said with those few other tweaks and some other stuff bunch of other content including yes the transporter tesla power transporter videos are coming soon a bunch of other cool stuff coming soon so as always thanks for watching